Hello, my fellow weeps. Do you believe in love at first sight? Personally, I didn't believe in it until I watched Spy Family, an insanely wholesome anime that makes you laugh and warms your heart, but underhandedly depresses you by reminding you of all the wonderful things you might be missing in life. Things such as a cool job, a cute daughter, or even a beautiful family. But the one thing I want most from this anime, the thing I fell in love with at first sight is obviously, this jet powered tennis racket that was used in that one tennis episode. I mean, look at this thing. Wouldn't you want a Sigma male slam that tennis ball towards your opponents? I'm horrible at tennis, but with this racket, I can just obliterate anyone on the other side of the court. Unfortunately, this groundbreaking technology does not exist in real life, so I'm just gonna have to build it myself. To start, I need to find the top of the line $20 tennis racket that I used when I was in elementary school. To boost the velocity of the tennis racket, I want to use RC jet turbines like this one, but it turns out they cost thousands of dollars, I need two of them, my bank account is already cosplaying as Mona's money pouch, and I don't want to accidentally burn down my parents' house by swinging a tennis racket that is literally farting fire. So instead, I'm going to use electric ducted fans, which are essentially electric jets, since they are still pushing a nice stream of air through them, providing us with our oh-so-desired thrust. Connected to the EDFs are these small black pouches called electronic speed controllers, and their job is to control the speed electronically. What are you, stupid? Lastly, to power these two EDFs, I stole these two 3S LiPos from these two modified Nerf guns. Now, I don't want to lose any fingers holding onto the EDF by hand while testing to see if they're working, so I designed, 3D modeled, and 3D printed these super simple mounts to hold the EDFs while testing. All that's left to do is program the Arduino, wire everything up, and... Well, that's scary. So that's one EDF working, now to try with two. Oh shit, did you see that? The EDF literally lifted itself out of its mount. As a quick fix, I'm going to use rubber bands, but I doubt they'll be strong enough to hold the EDFs at 100% power. Now this is the fastest speed I'm comfortable with trusting rubber band technology. To see how much potential speed we're actually spinning at, I installed this LCD screen that displays the percentage of max fan speed the EDFs are currently spinning at. Now I've run into a slight issue. I did not expect the EDFs to be this powerful, and even though I've ingeniously reinforced these test mounts with rubber bands, at the moment, 30% fan speed is the fastest I'm comfortable with. I'm pretty sure that if I increase the speed, the EDFs will fly out their mounts and just kamikaze themselves into the ceiling. So I need to design a stronger mount that will hold the EDFs securely so that I can test these EDFs at 100% power. So now I just stick all these electronic components in there.
While designing and building this Giga Chat of a test mount, I added a button to serve as an on and off toggle switch in preparation for the 100% power test. The new mount is ready and mounted to the table, so hopefully the new mount is confidence inspiring enough for me to push the EDFs to 100% power. Okay, so moment of truth. Seven, seventy-five. And there's one hundred. Other than watching the fans spin their housing, I know it's pretty hard to visualize just how much power these EDFs produce and how much air is actually being moved. So instead, let's see what this pair of EDFs can blow away. So you're probably wondering what these holes on the front of the mount are for. They're mounting holes for this 3D printed brace that'll let me stand the entire thing on a scale so I can hopefully measure a numerical amount of thrust the two EDFs produce. So we now know that the EDFs provide 1.5 kilograms of thrust and produce that amount of thrust at around 80% power. And that's how you let being too afraid to test something turn a couple hour process into a week and a half of designing and 3D printing. Now that we know how much thrust these EDFs produce and we have the core functionality working, it's time to repackage this entire hovercraft looking thing onto this tennis racket. So here's my plan. Just like in the anime, I'm going to have an EDF on each side of the tennis racket. To attach them to the sides, I need to design and 3D print mounts that securely hold the EDFs to the rim of the racket. For the Arduino, LCD, fan speed potentiometer, and batteries, this 3D printed box will secure all of them to the throat area of the tennis racket. On the grip of the racket, a mount that clamps around the grip will hold the programmable button in the spot where you usually rest your thumb. Then all there's left to do is zip tie the ESC and its wiring to the rim of the racket, make it look presentable, and reprogram the button so that the EDF spins while the button's held down and stops when the button is released. Now hold on, this video might make the engineering and building look pretty quick and easy, but that's all due to movie magic. In actuality, designing the parts took two weekends, and then printing the test parts, testing the multiple part versions, and making revisions took another couple weeks. In fact, getting to this final build took so long that my hair length changed in the middle of this video, but it was all worth it. I mean, look at this. This tennis rack looks amazing and works flawlessly. So the idea is you could bring your arm up in preparation for the swing without the EDFs constantly trying to pull the tennis racket forward. Once you're ready, push and hold down the button once you're ready, push and hold down the button and have the EDFs give your string a nice boost. And it's done. A fully functioning, totally not cheating, electric jet powered tennis racket from Spy Family. But does this tennis racket actually let you obliterate your competition like your does in her tennis match? There's only one place to find out.
So the knob adjusts the speed. Uh, you need to be at least 20% for it to go. And then you just you just touch this and it'll go. And when you let go, it stops. After such perfect instructions, it was time to start using the racket. Wait, so so how is it though? Like I definitely feel the the thrust? Yeah. But it's, but it's just fucking <laughs> <laughs> After a little bit of duct tape, it was on to the next victim. <laughs> it's nice, right? It'll work. Oh my god. Thrust is characters by Time for victim number three. What happened to it? Like, yeah, the thrust doesn't help at all. It makes it even harder to control. And it's good, right? It's falling apart. <laughs> it's good, right? Of course. How much would you spend buying this? I would say zero. Maybe five dollars for the parts. And finally, it was my turn to test my creation. I don't know what they were complaining about. The racket is amazing. Look at all these beautiful swings. <laughs> the battery. <laughs> How many perimeters do you have on this? It's so thin. It's one millimeter thick. No wonder. Yep. It's tape job shit too. No, those ribs are just to make it look like the anime. Yeah, I know. It still works. Oh, uh, let me set it to like. 95%. Hey, I made it! I can't get that one. <laughs> Hold on, the, one of the wires came out dead again. I'm winning with it, technically. My forearm shot. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you guys read by so heavy. <laughs> And there you go, a jet powered tennis racket inspired by Spad Family that will always make sure you win your next match. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this kind of anime inspired build video, click on this video where I built a super inappropriate gift box inspired by combatants will be dispatched. I've been Obaka, I'll see you in the next one.